Hi gang, Scott Davenport here. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the balance and blending sliders in Lightroom's color grading tool. I have a separate video about the tool overall, how to use it, how to pick colors, all that type of stuff. Link is in the show notes for that. This one is just about these two sliders, balance and blending, and how they're different. I got a few questions about that from the previous video. Well, this one's going to explain those. Really quick, if you like this kind of content and join the tutorials, please subscribe to the channel. It lets me know. Yeah, you want to see more more tutorials like this one. So let's take a look. So here we're looking at a rough estimation of the zone system. We have pure black on the left, pure white all the way to the right, and some varying degrees of gray in between. And uh, this will be illustrative so we can really see how these blending versus balance sliders are working. Now for my previous video, I explained how to pick colors and all that. So I'm just going to stage things first and we'll start with just setting the shadows and the highlights colors. So shadows, let's set that as like a green. And then highlights, let's set over like almost the opposite side, like you know this red. And so this is more of a traditional split toning where if we push blending all the way to 100, we have like a, a split toning effect. And then balance would be bias things toward the shadows, our green tone or toward the highlights, our red tone. And we can see that effect there, right? Well, now in the color grading world, blending is really kind of mixing the colors, right? So we have a mix of green to red. I'm, I'm ignoring midtones right now. So as I push blending farther, notice that the, the, the mix, especially in the middle, that, that zone five, that's getting quite, you know, this muddyish color between red and green. If I reduce the blending, I'm not having that effect as much. Now the midtones, again, I'm not affecting right now. I do not have a midtone tint selected. So we start to see this separation because I'm choosing to have very little to no blending. The shadows are getting the green tint, the highlights are getting the reddish tint, and not really anything in between, just a subtle blend from green all the way to red. Well, now let's add in a midtone color. Okay, so we have green over here, we have red over here. Let's choose something like purple. Okay, so I'm something in the middle here. And uh, just to, like, maybe maybe we'll we'll be really careful here. We'll we'll get pretty good pretty good on the points here. We've got you know a color point here, a color point there. And just to try to get some good separation of all three colors. Okay, something like that's pretty good. So we can see a couple of things with these blending and balance sliders. First off, they're global. They affect everything. So this is really telling the tool how to blend the colors you have selected. It's not a blending for shadows and a blending for midtones. They're all encompassing. So first, let's take the blending down to zero. What we expect is what happens. We have really a crisper delineation. Shadows get the tint that I've chosen for shadows. Midtones get the midtone tint. Highlights get the highlight tint. And there's really very little in between. Balance still works the same way. I can bias things toward the shadow tint, which is green. So as I push balance to the left, I'm saying bias the tinting to the shadows more. Consider more tones in the image as shadows. And so we see that green really start to encroach, you know, pushing all the way over to the right there. Now, if I take it in the opposite direction, we'll see the opposite happen. We'll see the red start to become much more dominant because that's the highlight tint. In the middle, it's your average, right? So you can shift around, you know, those midtones kind of bounce around a little bit as I'm moving things through. Now let's reset blending to its nominal where we have a nicer like mix. And as we push blending, we'll start to see more interplay of those colors. We push it all the way over to the right. And we start to see, especially in the midtones, there's much more of a gradual shift from shadows of green into the bluish purples I've chosen for the midtones, and then up to this reddish pink for the highlights. If I take balance and say, give me more shadows, so I push it to the left, we see, if I push it all the way, we see a very gradual drift slightly through the midtones and then up into these highlights. Vice versa, if 
for balance. So our balance slider is really working the way it worked with split tone. Bias things toward shadow tint or bias things toward the highlight tint. The blending is what's really new and that just says how crisp do you want the difference between the colors to be or how smooth do you want it to be. So it's higher blending, a smoother transition all the way through. So I hope that demystifies balance and blending for you. The balance slider is what we've had in split tone for a long time. Bias the tinting toward the shadows more or toward the highlights more. Which of those tones do you want to have more prominent in your photo? Push the slider in the direction of shadows for more shadow tint, in the direction of highlights for more highlight tint. Blending is the new kit on the block and that controls how rapid or gradual the transition between the different color tints you have chosen. So from shadows to mid-tones, you have a smaller value for blending. It's a more aggressive transition. If you have a higher value for blending, it's a more smooth transition. And the same thing is true from your mid-tone to your highlight tone tint. That's going to do it for the video. Again, you got questions, go ahead and drop them below. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.